Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Monday the 13th of March 2023. Our evening prayer begins with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be glory and praise for ever. In the darkness of our sin you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Him for this evening is God of freedom, God of justice. God of freedom, God of justice, you whose love is strong as death, you who saw the dark of prison, you who knew the price of faith, touch our world of sad oppression with your Spirit's healing breath. Rid the world of torturous terror, you whose hands were nailed to wood, hear the cries of pain and protest, you who shed their tears and blood, move in us the power of pity, rest us for the common good. Make in us a captive conscience, quick to hear, to act, to plead. Make us truly sisters, brothers, of whatever race or creed. Teach us to be fully human, open to each other's need. This evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. First Psalm is Psalm 11. In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to the hills? For see how the wicked bend the bow and fit their arrows to the string to shoot from the sh shadows at the true of heart. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try every mortal being. The Lord tries the righteous as well as the wicked, but those who delight in violence his soul abhors. Upon the wicked shall he rain coals of fire and burning sulphur. Scorching wind shall be their portion to drink, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds, and those who are upright shall behold his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 17. Hear my just cause, O Lord, consider my complaint. Listen to my prayer which comes not from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes behold what is right. Weigh my heart, examine me by night, refine me, and you will find no impurity in me. My heart, my mouth does not trespass for earthly rewards. I have heeded the words of your mouth. My footsteps hold fast in the way of your commandments. My feet have not stumbled in your palms. I call upon you, O Lord, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and listen to my words. Show me your marvellous loving kindness, O saviour of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against you. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings for the, from the wicked who assault me, from my enemies who surround me to take away my life. They have closed their hearts to pity, their mouth speaks proud things. They press me hard, they surround me on every side, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion that is greedy for its prey, like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, Lord, confront them and cast them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand, from those whose portion in life is unending, whose bellies you fill with your treasure who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to their little ones. As for me, I shall see your face in righteousness when I awake and behold your likeness. I shall be satisfied. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And reading from Genesis chapter 47. So Joseph went and told Pharaoh, My father and my brothers and their flocks and herds and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan. They are now in the land of Goshen. From among his brothers he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to the brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, We, are, we your servants, are shepherds, as our ancestors were. They said to Pharaoh, We have come to reside as aliens in the land, for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, because the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now we ask you, let your servants settle in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best part of the land. Let them live in the land of Goshen. And if you know that there are capable men among them, put them in charge of my livestock. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and presented him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the years of your life? Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my earthly sojourn are one hundred and thirty. Few and hard have been the years of my life. They do not compare with the years of the life of my ancestors during their long sojourn. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from the presence of Pharaoh. Joseph settled his father and brothers and granted them a holding in the land of Egypt, in the best part of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had instructed. And Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their descendants. Now there was no food in all the land, for the famine was very severe. The land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished because of the famine. Joseph collected all the money to be found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan in exchange for the grain that they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. When the money from the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan was spent, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? For our money is gone. And Joseph answered, Give me your livestock, and I will give you food in exchange for your livestock if your money has gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them food in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the herds, and the donkeys. And that year he supplied them with food in exchange for all their livestock. When that year was ending, they came to him the following year and said to him, We cannot hide from our Lord that our money is spent in the herds of cattle are my Lord's. There is nothing left in the sight of our Lord, my Lord, but our bodies and our lambs. Shall we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land in exchange for food. We, with our land, will become slaves to Pharaoh. Just give us seed, so that we may not die, so that we may not die but live, and that the land may not become desolate. So Joseph brought all, bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. All the Egyptians sold their fields because the famine was severe upon them, and the land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he made slaves of them from one end of Egypt to the other. Only the land of the priests he did not buy, for the priests had a fixed allowance from Pharaoh and lived on the allowance that Pharaoh gave them. Therefore they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Now that I have this day bought you and your land for Pharaoh, here is seed for you, sow the land, and at the harvest you shall give one-fifth to Pharaoh, and four-fifths shall be your own, as seed for your field, and as food for yourselves and your households, and as food for your little ones. They said, You have saved our lives. May it please, my Lord, we will be slaves to Pharaoh. So Joseph made a statute concerning the land of Egypt, and it stands to this day that Pharaoh should have the fifth. The land of the priests alone did not become Pharaoh's. Thus Israel settled in the land of Egypt, in the region of Goshen, and they gained possessions in it, and were fruitful, and multiplied exceedingly. Here ends the first reading. And the Canticle of the Song of Christ the Servant. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. 
Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. The reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested, as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness, and because of this he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honour, but only takes it when one is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who is able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Though he was a son, he learnt obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And it's the second reading. And our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O God of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So we come now to our prayers of intercession. As we pray for the Church throughout the world, we pray especially today for the Diocese of Rio de Janeiro. We pray for the Bishop Eduardo. Continue to pray for the World Mission Area for Christchurch Pont Blythe and today for the support of the Shared Ministry team as it awaits a new priest there. We pray today also for application, as applications close for the discernment in shortlisting candidates to be interviewed for the post of Diocesan Secretary in this diocese. We pray too for Bishop Gregory and for all those who lead the church at this time. Continue to pray for those who are in special need at this time, for those in Turkey and Syria continue to be affected by natural disaster, for peace in Ukraine and in Eastern Europe, for those facing the cost of living crisis, for those who are sick, for Louise, Gordon, Joshua, Derek, Jess, Wendy, Luna and Shirley, for John who was laid, laid to rest today, for James and Helen. In penitence and faith we make our prayer to the Father and ask for his mercy and grace. For to your holy people, 
that they may triumph over evil and grow in grace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Candidates for baptism and confirmation, that they may live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of mercy and truth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needy, that they may not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in body, mind and spirit, that they may know your power to heal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of God and see you face to face. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world for which Christ suffered to the mercy and protection of God. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before, before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me once again for, for um, today's evening prayer from uh, the office here at St. John's. Thank you very much.